Wake up. Wake up! You were out like a light just now. Where are you? Wait, what is that strapped to your chest? Okay, do not panic. Time is literally ticking here. We'll need to figure out how to disarm this bomb. Okay, deep breath. Let's figure out how to defuse the situation. Let's try to understand IEDs, or Improvised Explosive Devices. They can come in many forms ranging from small pipe bombs, to remote control cars, or more sophisticated devices capable of causing massive damage. Most IEDs consist of a variety of components known as enhancements, such as nails, glass, or metal fragments designed to increase the amount of damage caused and propelled by the explosion. According to Homeland Security, many commonly available materials Materials are found in IEDs like fertilizer, gunpowder, and hydrogen peroxide. To work, explosives must contain a fuel and an oxidizer, which provides the oxygen needed to sustain the reaction. In recent years, it's become more and more popular to build explosives out of liquid components, which is why in 2006, the United States Department of Homeland Security restricted the amount of liquids that passengers can carry on commercial aircrafts. Now that we understand how IEDs work, let's figure out how to get yourself out of that vest. All right, first things first, experts say that whenever you come in contact with an IED, it's important to treat every case like it's an active and dangerous bomb. Okay, so we're doing that. This very much looks like a live bomb. They also say when a bomb like this appears, it's just the tip of the iceberg. In other words, there's always a bigger picture in mind, like triggering a signal or causing distraction. So it's important to not fall into that trap. Do not get distracted. Eyes on the prize here. If you had the option, an expert bomb disabler would have taken it out with a tank shell, but since there's no safe way to take a shot or, you know, get your hands on a tank, we'll have to dismantle it. Now, the tricky part with IEDs is that they are all slightly different, but it seems like we're dealing with a pretty simple one over here, a tripwire device. You can see here that the IED vest itself is connected to a wire pulled across the room and attached to something. If you can remove that wire and take it toward the IED, it won't detonate. All right, carefully, we'll have to approach the wire attached to the pole over there and bring it towards your IED vest. Ooh, great job. Got a real steady hand there. Now here comes the real problem. You have to detonate the IED. Look around you. Look for some sort of plastic explosive like a C4 and position it to the IED. Experts usually have a three or four legged spider-like stand to keep it upright, but that's not as important as keeping it hovering or hanging above the IED. What you're doing here is creating an explosion that comes from above, so the device initiates or explodes downwards, causing the least amount of damage. Got it all set up? How lucky were you to find that C4 just sitting there? Now take cover. <coughs> Are you okay? You're not hurt. Thank God. Usually there would be flying debris to worry about, but it seems like he got lucky on this one. Most injuries related to explosions include overpressure damage. That's when your lungs or other organs get exposed to a great deal of weight or pressure. Another common injury is fragmentation, which comes from debris thrown by the blast. And then there's, of course, impact or thermal injuries. You may have to get that head of yours checked out. I think you may have a concussion, but hey, if you're walking away from this with nothing but a little head injury, I'd consider consider myself very lucky. Here's some other things to consider when you are protecting yourself from IEDs. Number one, be alert of your surroundings. If you see a suspicious bag or something else that doesn't quite belong, then report it to local authorities and keep your distance from the suspicious package. It's also important to develop or educate yourself on the emergency procedures at school or work, and if you haven't already, establish one with your family. In this procedure, you'll want to know the routes to the hospital, how to safely conduct some basic first aid, and a backup plan if communications go down like an official meeting place. And if you are in the middle of another IED attack, we're keeping our fingers crossed that you'll never have to be in one again. Stay away from windows or glass doors and always exit the affected area as quickly as possible. But I think that's a lot of excitement for today. Let's get you home, put your feet up, and put on a movie. Armageddon? You don't want to watch something less explosive? Alright, if you say so. Until next time, Brainiacs.